So let's uh, review one more time what we have so far in our application. So uh, we have uh, a string right here allocated and another string allocated. These are string literals. We construct two strings. So we have basically two boxes that we construct. Um, and we, uh, so one and another. And of course, internally they contain uh, string view, uh, C++ standard library class type of object. And they uh, give us access to these two strings. So they remember pointers to these two strings. It's very beneficial because we can call all sorts of functions inside of the string view. Uh, objects that uh, manage uh, the encapsulated strings very nicely. So when we say hello concatenate with hello or another string, we use this new operator. So the new operator computes, asks this string view, and then asks another string view right here, which is passed by reference, for their length. So both the lengths are computed plus one, plus one to account for zero term in any character. And this new operator allocates block of, block of characters. We can call them block of characters like this, which is uh, of this size right here, right? So this is the size of, uh, of this memory block. So then we copy string view data from here. So this gives us access from within this function. Right. Basically, this data essentially gives us access to this pointer right here. And then we also, so of course, hello world string will be copied to this block by string copy. Okay, so by, by this string copy, we, we copy this first string over here. Then we use uh, the same pointer, but this time we add the length of this. Uh, first string and so we begin our copying because of what we do right here this this pointer plus this offset so we as a result we begin uh, this is another pointer that we calculate we begin the second copy operation at this position and we we'll ask another st uh, string view data which returns back this pointer Right? So we copy this string, the second string, over here. Okay, so they're not proportional, but and also string copy automatically appends a zero terminating character at the end of all of this. So we manufacture this and this is fine. And then we of course construct another string, right? So we just create another string right here. We construct another string. And we give its constructor a pointer to this brand new string right here, right? So we just basically pass this uh, PSTR again to, to the string. So this string remembers the brand new string. And of course, internally it constructs the string view uh, object inside, which, which in fact remembers it. If you look up our constructors, you'll see all the matching parts right there. And then we return this brand new string from here, from this function, and this brand new object pointing to this brand new block of characters is plugged in in place of all of these concatenate uh, calls, and without any problem we are printing everything. So this is all the plumbing and the uh, display of every step uh, that we have in this implementation of concatenate. There is one little problem that remains here. By the time um, uh, our, our strings are getting out of scope, this new operator, which allocates this block of character, um, will never be deallocated. Because when this brand new string is constructed, and con internally, of course, it contains uh, this string view object inside the string. This string view object does not manage memory. It only takes uh, 
pointer to an existing memory and um, uh, provides all sorts of uh, functions to work with it, all sorts of operations. But it will never delete this block of memory or anything else in terms of memory management. Therefore, it's our responsibility to add um, memory management so that we need to delete this block of memory uh, when we are done using this string. Hello, greeting, and whatever. So this is why what I would like to do is to move this uh, character uh, point, uh, pointer to character to become a member of our class. Okay, so this uh, should become a data member, new data member of our uh, of our uh, string class, and of course I don't want to redeclare it right here. Also, as soon as the new data member is added, uh, we have to update our constructors to make sure that we initialize this pointer properly by our constructors. And uh, I would like uh, to document the rules of using this. I actually typed this in um, in my notes. And now I would like to uh, copy and paste this uh, comment right here and see if uh, we can read it and if it makes uh, sense in our context. So what is PSTR and why do we need it in this object? So when modified as a, like a result of concatenation, copies of existing strings are made and we must allocate memory dynamically which means using this new operator so pstr is the pointer to that dynamic memory right so this is basically the the now belongs to uh, the string uh, uh, class and this is brand new data member and what are the rules of using it i would say if it's set to null pointer basically initialized with all zeros, null pointer. This object does not own any dynamic memory. It means that the user never call concatenate function, for example, so it should remain null pointer. Otherwise, this object owns dynamically allocated memory and the destructor must free this dynamic memory. So uh, we need to add destructor to our class right now. And, uh, of course, uh, by the way, just, just before we do this, uh, let's make sure that with this little change, it used to be like a local variable right here, um, it should not matter. It, it really, like, if, you know, if I build this and run it again, um, oh, right here, uh, let's see. Oh, yes, um, right now, concatenate... Um, um, you see, compiler prevents me from using concatenate as written because it's modifying a data member right here. So this function can no, long, no longer be constant. I'll just remove, uh, remove it. Um, or we could possibly do it something like this way. We can declare it mutable, right? So we can keep our concatenation uh, um, function constant, but allow it to modify PSTR by, by declaring this data member mutable. Let's try this. I think it's appropriate uh, to, to use it this way. So mutable keyword allows data member of our class to be modified even though the function says I am a constant function and I do not modify it. So this is so deeply down in the implementation that I still want to be able to concatenate strings, which could be constant strings. But in the end, um, I will have to modify this data member. So I declare it mutable. So this is very useful keyword in our context. All right, so this, uh, this compiles fine. I'll press Control-5 to run it. It runs the same way. And uh, we just said that we need a destructor because we want to deallocate. We want to remember that we used new and now we want to deallocate the string. All right. So we will use um, string. This is the syntax of the destructor. Destructor has no parameters. So I'll just copy this. So we can say right here that this is our destructor. You can define only one destructor in your code. So this is our destructor. 
I copy it, copy it into our implementation file like this and we'll add here to uh, to the list of our constructors okay so this is fine we add it to the list of our constructors so replace of course semicolon with the with something to do with the body of the function and we need to prefix this name with the scope resolution operator so this is how destructors look like in your implementation file And this destructor will be a counterpart to our new operator. So we're going to say delete, definitely with square brackets, because we're deleting um, a block of characters allocated with the square, square uh, bracket syntax and the PSTR. So we're going to delete this memory. Of course, uh, like I mentioned to you, it, it's it's a little bit like, you know, you really have to make quite a few changes sometimes when you add new data member. Uh, one of the uh, one of the important parts is to update all constructors. Each constructor should set this pointer to null pointer. So these are the three constructors and I simply continue to use our constructor initializer list. I'll simply say PSTR curly braces null PTR because at the beginning our uh, pointer to dynamically allocate, allocated memory should be a null string. So we will uh, use this. Okay, just like this. And uh, now we are making sure that uh, string view with, will populate itself by the first. Uh, element on our initialization list and the second uh, element on our initialization list simply initializes PSTR to null. So we have to do this in our constructors. So every time you add new data member it's your responsibility to revisit every constructor that you have and make sure that you do the right thing to accommodate uh, this new value in our code. So, so far, in addition to our concatenate uh, function, we now add a destructor uh, to, um, um, to, um, uh, to our implementation of the Java-like string. And uh, you should see how much uh, uh, commotion and trouble this new concatenation function has caused us to caused us to do because um, we suddenly were faced with the need to allocate memory dynamically 